Hello everybody, my name is Anya Kelvin. I am a gospel minister. I am a nurse, I am a mother, I am a wife. I want to be sharing with you how God saved me and my family from COVID-19 and how God delivered us from a lot of things this year, 2021. It has been a very, very tough one. A tough one, but also one of the best because I would say that the wins that we got supersedes the failures. Being alive today, it's a very big testimony. It's a big testimony. Alone, I wouldn't have made it. Just a few weeks ago, I was lying almost dead in the hospital. And here I am. So the reason is this. I believe this would um, go a long way to encourage one person or the other. So please sit back, relax. First of all, I would say that no matter what you go through, no matter what you're passing through, no matter how heavy and how bad it is, there is a God who comes through. I'm a living testimony. At the beginning of this year, um, I was working, I mean, uh, I work and I school and somehow I actually intended to continue working and then finish my studies all of, of, I mean, at once. But then I was working, I didn't know I was pregnant. I, I was having the symptoms of being pregnant, but I didn't want to believe it because the plan wasn't to be pregnant at, you know, at that time. But somehow I was pregnant. So I kept on working before I actually confirmed I had to go to the doctor and it was confirmed that I was pregnant. So when I found out I was pregnant, everything with the pregnancy actually went well. I got support from people, from friends, from classmates, from colleagues at work. They were caring and all that, yeah. And most of all, support from God, the strength He gave me all through this time. Now, my music had to move on. Work had to move on. School had to move on. Family had to move on. Everything, all of this had to move on. Now, I'm a new person, not like and I'm now with a child. Now, this plans needed to be um, executed. It seemed so impossible. I was wondering how do I, how do I go about with work? How do I go about with my music, uh, with the ministry and everything? At a point, I was really afraid. I told my husband, I don't know how I'm going to pull through this. I was afraid. I was afraid, but I was just believing in God. Ah, oh, God, see us through. Somehow, I don't know where the fear was coming from, but I was really afraid, I tell you. God comforted me. He reminded me of how much he loved me and his promises for me in this world. That I will not fail. In anything I do, I will not fail. And that kept me going. I had to go. I had children to attend to. I had work to do. I had ministry to attend to. So... We planned to release our first song for the year, Bow, where we featured the Anointed Mind of God, um, Chris Morgan. And after we recorded, we planned for the video shoot. I mean, everything was arranged. All of this in the COVID uh, pandemic. And after we made an appointment for the video shoot, after we made all arrangements, I mean, got the crew together and everything. On the day of the shoot, it was confirmed that the camera guy so, uh, tested positive to COVID-19. Not just he alone, the keyboardist tested positive to COVID-19. It didn't just end there. The um, one of us is supposed to take us for this car to the locations.
tested positive to COVID and the whole of the family. Meanwhile, part of the team were already with me at my home. Makeup was already made. I mean, people were already on their way from very far distance. I had the second keyboard just was already on his way from the very far distance with his wife. And people were already coming. What do we do? How do we do? The dancers and everybody, the choreographers. What do we do? Do we call it off? Or do we look for another person who can film? So we had we had to do both options. We decided to inform immediately the crew, and at some point we decided to look for other camera to see who other um, cameraman. So we we're here and there, but at the end of the day, it didn't work. We had to cancel. We sent messages out to everybody, and then just a stop away. Uh, the second keyboard just we, he got the news and yeah he had to return and that was how we cancelled for the first day. The storyline for the video actually had to change to suit the COVID-19 rules and regulations. So instead of having crowd in the background, yeah we had to change and um, we worked hard and that's what that's the result you see from Bao video. The man of God also did his part, and that was it. So when the sun came, we had a lot of testimonies, we had a lot of uh, positive feedback. People were calling, ah, what are you doing about the song? The song was so beautiful, we should do something. We had a lot of deals, yeah, some people were offering to, yeah, kind of do a promo, promotion packages for the song to be aired on different TV channels. We got um, promotion deals from German promoters, yeah, from African promoters, I mean, East Africa, West Africa, a lot, a lot. We actually planned for a tour, I mean, we intended to do a tour, but um, the present situation at that time didn't allow it, it wasn't possible that I would go for a tour with such a protruded um, stomach with the baby it was really really difficult and um, I believed then also that God has a purpose for everything you know yes the time wasn't right that's what I believe so there was the ninth that was on the 15th my husband's birthday um, at the time we decided to just gist we're having a good time we're gisting we had a talk a long talk until about um, 2 a.m. around between 1 and 2 a.m. we went to sleep at exactly 3.04 while I was sleeping my water broke I heard the push the water broke while I was on the bed what I immediately stood up my husband was sleeping I woke my husband immediately I told him baby baby my water has just broken <clears throat> My husband immediately was on the panic. He started panicking. So I said, I really, I really didn't want to believe it was labor because that I never had any pre contractions. I never had any contractions, like any signs of labor, nothing. It was fine. We went to bed. And like I said, we had a good time. We, we talked until at about 2 a.m. before we went to bed. No signs of labor at all. Yeah, and so I felt actually it was a false labor, false labor alarm. So I told my husband to calm down, it couldn't be. But immediately I stood up myself from the bed. I stood up, I walked, um, I saw that the water was still gushing out. Mm. Oh God. So I said, at the point, I said, okay, let me just quickly wash and change just in case um, I have to go to the hospital. So I went, I washed. The contraction were getting more really, really serious. Like the time in between, shorter. Oh God! I told my husband to immediately put up a call through to the um, emergency. So we called the emergency, and yeah, they came home in less than how many minutes? Five, six minutes. They came home. I went to check. They said, "Oh, really? We have to go to the hospital." And so we went. 
while on the way to the hospital to contract baby was pushing out already like she was pushing out when we got to the hospital they wasted a little time but then the um not the calls and emergency workers they were like nine you people have to check this lady contraction are so short and all that so i, I was immediately um uh, given over to the midwives and the check if we had not um, gotten to the hospital earlier baby would have come by herself without the support from anybody because this was really really quick like the bible says like um we the women we shall deliver like the hebrew women it was quick in minutes the nurses i mean the midwife checked and saw that oh baby is there like she's there immediately rushed me to the labor room and before i knew it baby was out it was just one midwife no doctors just one support i actually loved my husband to be by me during labor my husband had to stay at home to look after my older daughter yeah the, uh, i mean it was an unplanned birth this time around i didn't pack anything to the hospital like i said she came way way early earlier than expected weeks earlier than expected so no plans and i was all by myself at the hospital but thank god it went very cheap quick yeah. and baby was fine normally at the point or at the stage where i put to birth she still needed the, su the support of oxygen or yeah but we we're allowed to go home after three days because she was doing fine and then when we got home i mean we started noticing some things because her digest uh, digestive system wasn't ripe enough she had problems with digestion. She couldn't pull for, I mean, weeks. We took her to the doctor. The doctor would say, okay, it was normal. Yeah, because she came earlier. The system wasn't right enough that it was normal. She was vomiting so much, like the diaphragm wasn't totally closed yet. It was still open. She had all these issues, she was crying so much, stomach pains. You know, she had, I don't know if she had colic or something, I don't know. But I had a daughter, a daughter. I have a, a, the older sister, the elder sister. And I didn't experience that with her. It was really terrible. We didn't sleep for weeks, days. Yeah, all in the night, in the day, we're up. We're trying to support her because it was really, really trying for me. The moment she cried, she would whine and just cry. I, I saw that she had stomach pains. Something was wrong. She would cry. I would take her to the doctor and at the moment I took her to the doctor, the doctor said, ah, okay, you mean for this time, this long, she had done past physics. And I would say, yes, the doctor said, okay, this time around, I would um, advise you go straight to the hospital. And so we went to the hospital. When we went to the hospital, we had needed at the hospital. So. The first testimony is she was fine. She was absolutely okay. There was nothing wrong with her. All tests came out negative. Even though she was not sleeping, I mean, 24 hours, this girl is not sleeping. She's crying. You know, she put us all under pressure and all that. So that was that. At the end of the day, we got the chef from the hospital after some days. Yeah. We went back home. And when we went back home, Thinking that, okay, okay, let's get used to the system. Baby is here, you know. And my daughter tested positive to COVID-19. Surprisingly, how the children, she has friends and um, she was invited for a birthday party and the mother confirmed after days that the daughter tested positive. And that was how my daughter contacted the virus also. Now, it's very difficult to separate me, the child, from her. Yeah, we tried our best, but before we knew it, it started spreading from one person to the other. From my daughter, we got to my husband. Now, my husband has been vaccinated twice, took the biotech vaccination, but still he got it first and it was terrible. He felt ill. I mean, I felt it was a joke. Oh, I felt he was pretending because of the stress and everything. He wanted to take a break. <laughs> yeah. But no, it was real. He had pains. He had 
fever, he had all sorts of symptoms. And he went to the hospital and just confirmed that he was positive. Now he decided to fire down himself with them. Um, because I just put to bed, this is barely a month after I put to bed. My immune system, my body wasn't strong enough yet. I mean, it was so scared. What if I get contacted? If I also, what if I also contacted? This is what will happen to me. And yeah, before I knew it, I contacted it, but mine was worse. It was so bad. Tests were carried out on me severally and it came out negative that I wasn't COVID, um, I was not positive to COVID. But I, I had my, I know the symptoms I was feeling. I had pains, I had fever, serious cough, cold, high fever and all that. But several times I did the PCR test, I did the test, it wasn't positive. But it kept on, the doctor gave me drugs, he prescribed drugs, I bought the drugs, I wasn't getting any better. Before I knew it, Lo and behold, I slumped in front of my toilet, I think, yeah, the toilet room. I didn't know what was happening to me anymore. Now, my husband also didn't know what to do. He started panicking. So we called out to the emergency unit that rushed again to my home and they immediately rushed me to the hospital. When I got to the hospital, the first thing they did because of the, the regulations for the pandemic, and so they did a quick test. Surprisingly, it turned up positive. Mm. And then I was tensed up. I mean, I was like, what will happen? I have a newborn. Now, I forgot to mention that I had to go to the hospital with my daughter, the newborn, because my husband couldn't, yeah, he, he wouldn't be able to take care of her. And the elder one, the elder one needed to go to. Um, the kindergarten and all of the things. She was too small for him to handle. So they, they advised we go with her to the hospital then. I mean, there will be nurses who will take care of her. All this time she was with me. I breastfeed, I mean, I do um, exclusive. Now, I started panicking, I have a child, what do I do, oh God. This was really, really terrible and hard for me. But then, there was no space also in the hospital because it was full with COVID patients. I was admitted at the emergency center and then the space was made for me in the, in, in the ward. This time I tell you, I had high fever. I was still breastfeeding. My daughter was still with me. I had to wake up in the night. I wasn't sleeping. I was really, really sick. I still had to take care of her. I had to take care of myself. But it totally broke down. At the time at the hospital, I wasn't breathing anymore. I mean, it was a total shutdown. And then I was rushed to the intensive station. Now, they were forced to take my child from me. Now, I was taken, I was rushed to the intensive station. I didn't know where I was. Um, it was a different world. I mean, it was terrible. I wasn't breathing. I was breathing with the help of the oxygen. I didn't know where my daughter was. I didn't know if she was with me or I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on with my elder daughter or my husband. Now I was there for days. It was a total different experience. It was really a different experience. I was down, like down, almost gone. God forbid, I have an assignment God has given to me and I wasn't going to die then. I was very sure, but my husband was dead worried. He was worried. He felt because Daisy didn't hear from me. Now at the hospital, he couldn't speak to me. He wasn't allowed to visit the hospital. He wasn't quarantine. Apart from that, because of the COVID, he was not allowed to visit the hospital. Now he started calling friends, he called out spiritual uh, fathers and mothers to seek for prayers my parents at home friends i mean and these people actually they stood up in the gap for me and i'm not taking this for granted my fathers in faith my mothers in faith family friends brothers sisters who stood up in the gap and prayed for me that i get out of that intensive station 
I want to seize this opportunity to say thank you to you. It means a lot to me that I came out from that place. It's because of your prayers. It's because of your support. Because it was terrible. Everybody thought it was the end. The thoughts because the doctor couldn't really even figure out why the total blackout. Why I was in that state. But I believe the prayers you rendered brought me out, helped me out. My daughter also tested positive. My, the newborn tested positive to the COVID. But glory to God, there was no symptoms. She didn't have fever. She didn't have any of those um, strong cough or difficulty in breathing. Even though she was with me all the time. Now I came out. I mean, this part makes me so it's exciting that she's here. She's here, she's healthy. She didn't go through the pains I went through, the difficulty in, in breathing, in, my, in the chest, in the back, in the, it was terrible from my ribs because I couldn't imagine how would my child survive this if actually she had the symptoms I had. Because one talk, if I try to speak and then I'm coughing the whole, I'm coughing and my whole ribs are pain in me i mean excruciating pains i was worried what would, what would happen to my daughter but god brought me out god brought me you wouldn't know what i went through but i've come to say this that god is alive god brought me out of this this situation not just me the whole of my family what would the world have said what would they have said so, giving all the glory back to God for this great opportunity he has given me, yeah, that I may finish the assignment he has given me and that I would leave again. So, thank you so much again for everybody who stood in the gap. A lot of my friends on social media, you people wrote me because for this long time I couldn't even make a post. Nothing was happening on my, my social media platform. And I got your messages. Those who sent out the love, those who wrote me to check on me. How my, it's been a long time and all that. I got your messages. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. God bless you real good. Wherever you are, I am the one standing. If not for God, I would have been dead a few days ago. But I am alive. And now I'm going to use the opportunity to, 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 to encourage someone who is sick there today or you're facing one challenge or the other believe in god and everything will be fine i know this because i have been through this i am a living testimony there are other testimonies i will share with you but then when the time comes you will know there is a god there is a god that answers prayers there is a god who saves there is a god who heals there is a god who provides he provided for us this year he covered up our mess, healed us, given us a new life and a second chance. So if you don't believe in this God, if you don't believe in Jesus, he exists. Believe in him, seek him, and you will not lose your way. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Look out for our projects. I mentioned our album is coming out. We have full package for you that will bless you so look out for it 2022 is going to be full with so much i am excited and we're really excited and um i wish you a beautiful beautiful christmas and a prosperous new year in advance god bless you thank you for staying put thank you so much bye Call you a rubble or a joke.